Final tutorial on modeling, we're going to review how to do regression with data to fit a first order plus dead time model. So we might have an initial guess that we obtain maybe from a graphical fit or just from process knowledge. And we're going to try to align that with the data. You can see the red line, which is the optimized FOPDT model. So there's many different ways uh, to do this uh, to be able to design uh, first of all, your input steps. We're going to cover some of that, how you design your test so you can get good data. And then also, uh, once you have your data, how you set up the first order plus dead time model and be able to calculate the parameters of the FOPDT model, which are going to be KP, tau P, your time constant, and theta P, your dead time. So those are the three parameters we're interested in. We're going to adjust those to try to minimize the sum of squared aired between all of the points in this horizon. And so this is going to be our regression approach. All right, so um, if you want to follow along on this, here is a link on TC Lab Regression. It has some of the initial source code. You're going to have to run this for 14 minutes, you know, stepping the heater up and down and you can adjust this if you'd like. Um, you know, right here, you can adjust the heater levels for starting at a different time. And then you just loop through and it saves a data file that's going to be called stepresponse.csv. And then we're going to try to use that uh, to do our regression, be able to come up with the best parameters possible. So, um, you know, just uh, start that. It's going to take a little bit to generate uh, this file. Just open it up in a text editor. You can see a time Q1 and T1. If you open it up with Excel, um, you can see that it's going to just be the three columns there in Excel. Okay, and this one's going to go for a total of 841 rows of data plus the header. All right, so um, what we're going to do is take this data and try to do the sum of squared errors, uh, be able to minimize that by adjusting these three parameters. And there's some background information on doing this on, on the regression approach. If you come back to the, uh, the course website, there's regression of FOPDT models, a link to that, and it goes over much more information about how to do this with an optimization using SciPy Minimize Optimize or you could also use the curve fit function in the SciPy uh, uh, Optimize package as well. Um, I don't have uh, source code for that. You can also do it in Excel as well. So I show you how to set it up with Excel or with uh, Python. Okay, so if you'd like to, uh, just come here to these videos and try to uh, understand how the optimization works. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but if you'd like to come here uh, to the source code, okay, where you have an initial guess and it tries to come up with the best uh, fit for you, I'm just going to grab this file and then you'll just change this to your source data file. You may have to parse if they're in different order than these. You may have to tell it, you know, this column is my time, this column is my input, and then the other one is the output. In this case, it should be the same. So you can just come down here to the Git code, and then you select it. It'll give it to you in raw text format, and then you can grab it. And then, um, so let's just go through this and see if we can start it uh, doing the regression. Okay, so if it's data.csv, then we just need to change this uh, to our step response model. And so if we just change that input file to step response, and then we have our U value, which is our input, and that is going to be our second column, which is the Q1. So that is correct, it's our second column. And actually, let me just open this with Excel. It's a little bit easier to see in Excel. Move it over here. 
All right, so here is uh, time, which is going to be our first column. And we're just going to subtract off if there were any, uh, you know, started not at zero. We're just going to uh, subtract off the very first data point uh, for time just to make it start at zero. And then there's our there's our U values. We're going to take the uh, this column right here. Those are our inputs. And then these are YP, our measured outputs. We also are assuming that U0 and YP0, those are initial points. Those are going to be our steady state uh, points. Okay, so one common mistake with this, if you are generating your own input sequences, uh, is that these two need to be your steady state conditions. Okay, just those very first two values. Otherwise, it's going to um, you know, you're not going to have good steady state values, and it's going to have a hard time fitting. Um, okay, and and then just coming through here, we're calculating our FOPDT model. That is called by Sim Model to calculate your trajectory. Once you do that, you compare it with a sum of squared errors between the predicted and the measured values, and uh, then we use the SciPy minimize optimize, uh, giving it our objective definition with some initial guess values, which are km, tau m, and theta m. Those are initial guess values. And then once it completes, then we uh, calculate the new updated trajectory and then plot them. Okay, so that's basically our script. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run it. Um, one thing I will mention is this is an unconstrained optimization, so it could decide on values for time constant and time delay that are negative. Uh, if it's that's a problem, you can switch over, uncomment this, you can switch over to an SLSQP method that allows you to have bounds on your variables to prevent you know negative values for your time constant or time delay, which we know can't happen. Um, so you can comment the, this line right here and then uncomment these and adjust your bounds on the gain, on the time constant, and on the dead time if you'd like. Okay, so it's gonna, it's, it's trying different values of these three parameters and trying to come up with the best ones that minimize the sum of squared error. So let's, um, as this is calculating, it'll pop up once it's done. It can take a while sometimes. Uh, you know, strategies for, for helping it calculate a little bit faster to give it better initial guess values or those constraints as we mentioned. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just talk about how we would do this in practice. I know I gave you the, the input sequence here. Um, of how to change these values over the 14 minute period. But let's just talk about it. If we have control over our heater, okay, we could do uh, random steps to different levels like this. Uh, some of the common things that you see in industry are things like, um, you know, if you're operating at steady state, you go up and then down and then back up. And this is called a doublet. Okay, a doublet test. The standard step test is um, just a single step. One of the reasons why we do the doublet is so we can see the response going up and down. It helps us determine the nonlinearity. Also, um, you know, we're not just doing a step up, this could disturb our process. So we go up for a period of time, then back down to kind of correct for it, and then back to the nominal value. It gives kind of a minimal disturbance of the system. Some of the other ways that are done in practice, oh, it just popped up there. Let me just go and finish this. Uh, there's a pseudo random binary sequence. So in different durations, you have uh, this going up and down to predefined limits. And so that is called a PRBS, a pseudo-random binary sequence or signal. Um, and then another way that's done 
uh, to be able to identify models is you could have you know you're controlling a, a process and then you add small dithers to the process that are always happening okay and they're almost indistinguishable but over time you're able to do these small steps everywhere and be able to pick out uh, models from the historical data so if data is just driven not by set point changes but just by disturbance rejection if you want to go back and get historical data it's probably not going to be a very good fit uh, so you have to have some independent perturbation to your system otherwise you won't have the information content there to be able to identify your model okay so let's go back to this um, plot so here was my initial guess in blue at the top and then the optimized fit so it looks like it did a pretty good job of fitting and then let's see what values it came up with um, it said that the KP value is 0.78 and the tau P is 165 and the theta P was 14.7 so just comparing that with the last exercise from the graphical fit we came up with a 0.7 gain uh, 140 uh, second time constant in this case it's 165 and then a theta P was about 15 seconds from the graphical fit so fairly close in terms of the values that we got from the graphical fit okay, I would mention one of the other uh, advantages of doing this with optimization versus the graphical fit is um, you know with the graphical fit you're limited pretty much just to step responses uh, whereas the optimization approach you can give it virtually any input sequence as long as you hold this at a, uh, a constant value for long enough uh, typically one to two time constants in order to be able to have it distinguish uh, the time constant versus time delay values okay so that's um, that's this tutorial on the regression approach um, again if you'd like to understand more about the solution and how that works there's that other code and uh, video there that can help you walk through uh, the source code for that and again there's other approaches like curve fit or others uh, to be able to obtain those parameters